my name is uh, Mike Nevis. I'm an Agile enthusiast and I'm with uh, Solutions IQ as an Agile coach. I've uh, been consulting with multiple enterprises, uh, both big uh, and small teams and various team sizes and um, organizations. Um, very happy to be here, to be sharing something that is and always been my passion um, for many years, an uh, agile way of doing things, right? Uh, I, I'm a learner as well. I keep learning, and uh, this is a great opportunity for me to share some thoughts uh, that I've been um, thinking for some time now, right? Uh, so I bet you ha have been listening to many Agile or Scrum-specific techniques and framework, uh, to-dos, not-to-dos, and things like that. Uh, so I thought let's have uh, something on the lighter side today uh, to, to spend some time in a more generic topic on humans and systems, right? Um, that is a very broad topic, but uh, I just tried to condense it for about 10 to 15 minutes max, not more than that. Um, so let's get started. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, before we start on how Agile should be experienced, uh, to stay with today's topic, uh, let us reflect on what a mechanical or a human system is in a more generic uh, sense, right? And what the heck do all these keywords and buzzwords in today's software development like Agile, Scrum, Lean, uh, Kanban got to do uh, with, with this, yeah? So let's see. Uh, let's step back a little bit for this um, and reflect. Um, Agile methods have been in uh, many industries for quite some time. Um, used to be called lightweight methods or some in some other terms. Maybe a few times it didn't even have a name to it. Uh, but organizations found it needed during some time in the development phase, right? Or maybe since it was not meant to be synonymous with program development, um, it wasn't given that much importance for the entire organization. Uh, whatever the reason, uh, the name tells all about why it was needed, right? Uh, we simply needed a yes, no, or a maybe answer. Uh, that's what uh, was uh, needed at those times, and that's why we called it lightweight methods or something, uh, instead of a more uh, convoluted or confusing answer uh, that makes the solution more complex. Uh, so in most industries, uh, we humans, right, includes me as well, I've had a tendency to make things complicated because we are complex, right? Um, that is our nature. Uh, as we pile processes on top of processes to monitor the risks and unknowns, it becomes even more complex, right? This is very difficult to sustain is what we have experienced to now. So what do we do? Maybe create more complex, more uh, process that monitors this complexity. Yeah, I think that's what we've been doing all these years. And what, how this ends up being is basically a tangled rope. Well, what do we do now? We write some book, we write some uh, solutions uh, to uh, counter these issues, right? Well, what does that book say? It says simplicity. This is exactly where we started from. So uh, the, the point is, I'm, I'm trying not to say that we do not need process maps or that do, does not work or we do not need any mechanical system whatsoever. What I'm trying to say is um, it just takes more people. And, and monitoring on a large scale without the timely feedback and the value that is needed to get it up. And usually, when we put processes on top of processes, it doesn't reduce the complexity, right? Uh, which is the reason we did all this to begin with. So I'm, I'm also not implying that we need less time and less people to get the job done, no. My thoughts are that we can use this time and 
the people more efficiently to do the most valuable thing for any business and not to worry about a few mechanical processes that we are either unsure of or do not even understand at some times, right? On the other hand, what if we start with a simple system? What happens then? Uh, we tend not to trust it because it is simple, right? We think it may not work since we aren't sure if it has all parameters and dependencies covered, uh, which we call unknowns, uh, risks, and, and everything that comes with a complex system. So we start to create some metrics and monitoring abilities around the simple system just to make us feel comfortable around the unknowns. Right? Many leaders think that any development that we do should be a mechanistic process with proper metrics defined, right? It is like any process can be improved just by having better data. And if we fine tune it just a little bit and keep doing it, maybe things will turn out okay. The reason is, I don't think so. Uh, uh, just just to uh, complete that sentence, I, I don't think that is how we need to uh, counter um, complexity. The reason is with unknowns, how can we get it just right to begin with, right? There can also be many reasons for the data that we collect to be incorrect or invalid. Unknowns can be reasoned out only through one way by giving it a try to get it answered, right? So why place so many mechanistic concepts to counter these unknowns when we know it isn't going to work? Now you know where I'm heading to, don't you? This is a vicious cycle as we humans are built around this complex substances. You remember our brain, right? It is the most complex of things in the world. So we are built around it. The point is software development, just like any in the learning systems in our lives cannot just be a mechanical system but also a human system. It is about people, isn't it? We do need knowledge, we do need data, uh, the metrics that is required and all that good stuff, but just enough data, just enough knowledge on systems or frameworks. But also it should be more of a human factor that should drive the system to its needed implementations. That's where I'm getting at. Uh, we are organic, and we deal with organic terms like people, culture, a character, every day in our work life, don't we? Okay, now let's talk Agile. You have all seen this, um, the manifesto for Agile, right? The four points, individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. I wanted to read this out one more time because now you can see all the most value driven concepts like individuals and interactions, Working software, customer collaboration, and responding change is more organic, isn't it? In respect to today's time, uh, let's play a, a small uh, scenario game, I may call it, right? Uh, just with one, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. This means while there is value with having the knowledge of internal processes and tools that we use, it makes much more sense to get more efficient by way of interacting with individuals, right? That is more human. I just took one as an example. But if you had to go over the manifest and the principles that Agile methods recommend, uh, it stresses more on human behavior, I think. I would like to explain this more by way of a scenario. Um, it's just an experience that I had, right? So now, uh, there's something, all these keywords, very good keywords in Agile, um, 
change, customer interactions, responding to change, and things like that. So uh, one, uh, maybe a couple of years back, um, there was this manager. Uh, this was an agile adoption as well with one of my uh, clients. And uh, this manager was very passionate about what she was doing. So she just uh, comes in one day and says, uh, hey, Mike, uh, we are agile, aren't we? Uh, so we should be willing to change, correct? And, and I say, yeah, um, this absolutely should, should be willing. Um, I think I was too quick to answer that without getting the details from her, right? Uh, then she says, uh, okay, but my team is not willing. Uh, what should I do in this case, right? Um, I say they, uh, the most basic of any Agile team uh, should be willing to change. So let's go talk to the team. Uh, before that, can you tell me what happened? What did you ask them is what I asked her, right? And then she goes, uh, Mike, I told them now that we are Agile, uh, we should be able to change. So wh when I got a different uh, priority, uh, a new user story from um, the stakeholders, uh, this was uh, mid mid sprint, right? Uh, she goes. I told my team we are we should be ready to be adaptable. So let's pull out whatever it is and put in a new user story because this is of higher priority today. Okay, uh, but the team said uh, no. But we have already committed to sprint, and this doesn't fit in. I have to. We have to groom this and things like that. Right? All these conversations happen. But uh, well, what do you think happened there? Uh, when we say agile teams are willing to be adaptable, we really mean the teams are willing to be adaptable. Should be, at least, right? But does this mean changing priorities mid-sprint? Have you asked that question uh, to your team or the team vice versa have, has asked this question to you? Uh, or, or for that matter, in, in few of my uh, experience, changing people within a sprint has also happened. But it's, it's, is this something that needs to be done or should should we do it as part of an agile team? These kind of questions, right? I think that is what we need to be focusing on instead of being mechanical about it, right? So we do need the human factor within a system that is recommended. Change cannot be random because this is what will happen if we take a a recommendation and do it the wrong exactly the wrong way without understanding the purpose behind why that is being done right change cannot be random just because we say agile teams are willing to change does not mean that we keep changing randomly the change that happens is solely by experience and observation as Mike Cohen uh, puts it in one of his books both experience and observation are human factors that are needed to better the framework, right? Guys, that is where I'm getting to. Change or any other virtue that Agile uh, recommends comes, plays well, in other words, with the human factor behind it, right? Uh, I'm sorry, guys, I had to show you this, I mean, Mr. Jobs has, um, in fact, motivated so many people around the world by what he does. So I just wanted to show him during this webinar, right? Uh, it may or may not have any relevance to what uh, we have been talking about, but this is something that we have to uh, really look forward for leaders like this, right? Um, the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. Right? But it comes with experience and observation, definitely. So you see where I'm getting at. As with any change, we have certain principles that attains the goal of being something, in our case of being agile, for example. Right? When considering and experiencing this, we should consider the purpose of why we do it. If we understand this, we will find better ways of being agile. My request to you all today is to understand the purpose of being agile and what it brings to you and your team, your human touch. 
don't be aliens to it. Like I mentioned, we are organic and we should think in those terms to being the best Agile team ever. If you ask me, just uh, like OOP's concept has become the de facto in programming for a decade, more than a decade now, I think Agile should and will become the de facto way of doing things in any development going forward. Yeah. So let's consider embracing a different metaphor today. Uh, if you are with me until now, right? Uh, let's think in terms of organic terms. Uh, we thrive in an organic system and we need to approach software development in a similar fashion as well. We deal with people every day, don't we? We deal with cultural challenges, don't we? Aren't people and culture organic as well? There are environments where we thrive and there are environments that we cannot thrive at all. So at this uh, moment, I would like to um, tell a story that Sir Ken Robinson told in one of his uh, talks. Um, I was profoundly fascinated by this talk. Uh, that's why I'm sharing this with you. I uh, hope this helps um, think in a different uh, metaphor uh, going forward from now for you guys as well. So there's a place called uh, Death Valley in Central California where you do not see any lively being, hence the name, right? Uh, because one of basic needs for an organic being to thrive was missing, water. Now in the fall of 2004, uh, it seemed that it drained here heavily, yeah? So in the spring of 2005, people saw all kinds of plants life come to being in the same place. The point is good needed practices as we see it, no matter which work we do, is not dead after all. It is just dormant under the soil, right? If we provide the right environment, control the climate a little to the needs of the team and or the system, I bet people will rise to it. Great leaders know this, by the way. Yeah. What we need is a climate control instead of a command and control culture. And since we are organic, we are just dormant. All our practices are just dormant under the soil. It will come to life pretty soon. I encourage you all to think in this perspective to all that we do in our daily lives. So a conclusion, right? I think we do need some mechanical system, but with a more humanistic approach. That is what has been missing in our uh, IT um, uh, departments, organizations across the world. And that is where Agile brings us closer to that as well. So before we leave today, uh, I would like to, again, uh, from Sir Ken Robinson's uh, talks, um, one of Benjamin Franklin's fam famous wise quotes, right? He's, he's very good in his words. Uh, so he uh, talks about three kinds of people. Uh, one, immovable, right? Uh, who do not get it or do not want it. And no matter what, um, they do not want to change. There's, uh, there are people who are movable. People want to change. They are prepared, right? They are just ready. And then there are people who move. They are always changing. They're always ready to change, yeah? And we, if we can encourage more people like that, it becomes a movement. And when it becomes a movement, multiple movements become stronger. In the best sense of the word, it becomes a revolution. And I think, guys, uh, that is what we need in IT and software development today as well. Thank you very much for your time.